Warren Buffett is a financial legend known as the Oracle of Omaha due to his investment prowess. Buffett is currently the seventh richest person in the world with a vast fortune of over $100 billion. For many years, Buffett headed Berkshire Hathaway, a hedge fund firm that owns more than 60 companies. Now he has revealed some of the secrets he used to amass so much wealth. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, it's... Do you want to learn the simple strategy Buffett used to outperform 99% of investors? Keep watching this video to find out. Most of us appreciate the appeal of investing money into the stock market and simply watching it grow. But only a few can understand how incredibly rewarding this could be. It's not surprising that the world's finest investor, Warren Buffett, is a perfect example of this. Warren, the legendary investor, won a $1 million bet against protege partners in 2007 that hedge funds would not beat an S&P index fund. So how does Warren Buffett make long-term investments? Just imagine if he was an average guy, spent his teens and 20s traveling the globe and discovering his vocation, and his total wealth was maybe 25,000 by the age of 30? And what if he continued to make the exceptional yearly returns on investments he'd been able to generate, 22% per year, but stopped investing at 60 to instead play golf and spend quality time with his grandkids? What could be an approximate estimation of his current net worth? Well, not $81 billion. That would be around $11.9 million, or 99.9% .9 of his estimated net worth. Buffett's financial success can essentially be attributed to the foundation he established while he was still in his adolescence, the longevity he carried into his senior years. Aside from beginning to invest at an early age, emotional trading has been found to affect investor returns. Take the benchmark S&P 500, for instance. It has provided positive investment returns over most 20-year timeframes for investors. Warren Buffett recently revealed one of his key strategies in a Yahoo Finance interview. The multi-billionaire investor stated that 99% of investors shouldn't even try to beat the market. He advised them to invest in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund instead. Let me give you a figure that'll blow your mind, I think. I bought my first stock when I was 11 years old. It was the first quarter of 1942, shortly after Pearl Harbor. I spent $114.75. Three, three shares, 114.75. If I put that 114 into the S&P 500 at that time and reinvested the dividends, think of a figure as to what it might be, would be worth today. Buffett recalls. So what do you think? 20,000? 90,000? Let me give you some help. That's way too low. Well, let's see what Buffett has to say about it. Oh, man. Well, it's, okay, you know, but I, I just want right. your audience to think okay. for a second. Okay. The, answer, the okay. answer is about $400,000. Oh. So if I, as a little kid, had taken that $114, i would save a shovel of snow or whatever I'd done. $400,000 today in one person's lifetime. That's America. I mean, that isn't me. You know, it, it's, it is the huge tailwind the American economy gives to any equity investor. Now, Buffett has long advised investors to invest in the S&P 500 benchmark index funds, which are available via most pension scheme administrator. I think it's the same thing that makes most sense practically all of the time, and, and that is to consistently buy an S&P 500 low-cost index fund. Although he admits that sticking with it all through the way isn't always easy, what Mr. Buffett is trying to say to investors is very crucial. Consistently outperforming the market is really difficult, but it's not impossible. Just 1% of investors, in his opinion, are capable of pulling it off. He explains this by pointing out that the large majority of investors lack the time, dedication, expertise, and discipline needed to be successful with active investing. And he's correct in that regard. Even investors who painstakingly study the market and carry out hours of analysis before making any decisions are still susceptible to several hardwired psychological biases that are very difficult to overcome. You don't want to buy to hold for a year. You don't want to buy with the idea that you could sell it in two years or three years necessarily make money. You may, you could lose money that way. But if you buy it for 10, 20, just keep 
buying the S&P 500 index and forget about all the other nonsense that's being sold to you because I'll guarantee you one thing about the stuff being sold to you, it will carry bigger fees than what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. With regards to his last statement, Buffett is implying that high management or brokerage costs will significantly reduce your returns, leaving you with much less than $400,000. So the real question is, will it happen again? To put it another way, would you continue to profit? Perhaps not exactly the same amount, of course, but still much like you just robbed a bank if you invested an equivalent amount and kept it in for the same 76 years or so. The short answer is yes. Let's take the benchmark S&P 500, for example. While the S&P 500's performance might fluctuate significantly from year to year, it is remarkably stable over multi-decade timeframes. Depending on the period you're looking at, the S&P 500's net value, including dividends, has historically averaged 9 to 10% every year. If you're young and invest in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund, such as the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, you can anticipate this type of gain over time. While a 9.5% increase in one year may not sound impressive, consider this. If you invested $65,700 in an S&P 500 index fund and earned a 9.5 annual return, you'd have a million dollar worth of investment value in 30 years. Even Bill Gates follows Warren's philosophy. No, I think the philosophy that uh, Warren Buffett has uh, put forward that if you can find great companies and invest in them, then the macroeconomics can go up and down uh, and the basic value of what you're holding on to there uh, will be maintained throughout that. Buffett believes that 99% of investors should simply purchase a low-cost S&P 500 index fund. But is that smart advice? The answer is yes, and here's why. Mr. Buffett is genuinely trying to help his followers to avoid making unwise decisions with their life savings. In other words, his intentions are pure. What he is actually trying to say is that the majority of investors would be more successful by simply snagging the returns of the market, because beating the market is so tough. To drive home the point, let's now add some competency factors to the mix. Let's assume you're a professional poker player with many bracelets and seven-figure earnings from gaming wins. If you were offered a spot in a tournament, would you go for it if you knew 90% of the players were rookies and 10% were professionals? You'd be crazy not to. Are you sure you will come out on top? No. However, your chances are reasonably good. This is how the investing game works. A small percentage of incredibly skilled professionals and amateurs who are aspiring professionals use their advantage over less proficient amateurs to hustle them out of money in a fair game of chess. When we include these skill components, the chances of success increase significantly. Not just Buffett, but Mark Cuban also expressed support for index funds as a smart way of investing. He made this known in an interview with Kyle Bass, the founder of Heyman Capital Management. The self-made billionaire said that the smartest way to approach investing money right now if you don't have much knowledge of the market is to place it in a cheap S&P 500 SPX fund. Likewise, Tony Robbins agrees with him. In his book, Unshakable, he argues that the funds minimize the human error, and hence the risk, which comes from attempting to select stocks individually. Index funds take a passive approach that eliminates almost all trading activity, he writes. When you own an index fund, you're also protected against the downright dumb, mildly misguided, or merely unlucky decisions that active fund managers are liable to make, Robbins writes. 